Hello fellow microscopists. So I have a quick video for you today. I'm going to discuss the cold trap on your Techni, uh, what it is, what it's used for, why it's there, and how to use it, of course. Um, so first of all, let's, let's start by discussing what it is. Um, so basically, it's a way to provide a cold surface inside the column that acts to have stuff stick to it inside the column. And that happens as a result of it being cold. So basically, it's colder than everything else inside your column, so therefore stuff will stick to it rather than stick to your specimen. So on some instruments, this is called an anti-contamination device. They all function the same way. So it provides a surface for stuff to stick to um, so it doesn't get on your sample. And it ultimately, it actually also keeps the pressure in your column down. Um, what it does not do, though, and there's actually a video on here on YouTube that incorrectly states this, the cold trap does not keep your specimen cold. It does not control specimen temperature, it has nothing to do with specimen temperature. The only way to do that is with a specialized holder. So the cold trap itself has nothing to do with that. Um, you could, if you wanted to, operate your microscope without using the cold trap, but you run the risk then of contaminating the specimen, which as we've already seen, if you've seen my video on contamination, can negatively impact the uh, quality of your results. So that's what a cold trap is, um, and that's why it's useful. So now we're going to talk about how to use it. So the first thing to keep in mind is that you want to make sure your viewing screen is covered. There should be a plastic cover for it or a rubber cover. You don't want to leave the screen uncovered when you do this because if you spill liquid nitrogen onto your viewing screen, you could cause it to crack, and that will be a very expensive repair. You want to make sure the support base for the little canister is clear, and then you can stick the braids inside the canister and then put the canister on to the support base. Then you need some liquid nitrogen. So I have some already here in a separate doer. And then you're going to fill up the canister. So you want to make sure the canister is already on the support base and the copper braids inside of it. You don't want to fill the canister first and then put it up there. And then you want to fill this all the way to the top. If you spill a little bit out, that's not a problem because you have the viewing screen of your TEM covered, hopefully. And then there's nothing to worry about. And so now what we're going to do is wait about five minutes, and then we're going to fill it up again. So it's been about five minutes, and we're going to go ahead and refill the canister. And so by waiting five minutes, we allow the canister to come to equilibrium. And then if we refill it, it will stay fuller longer than if we just did not fill it again, because now it's actually cold. And so once we top it off here, it will stay cold for about seven or eight hours. If we wanted to use the TEM beyond that, we just have to add some more in. Then you want to make sure, of course, when you're done filling it, you cover it with the foam cap. And then the instrument will be ready for use, and your cold trap is nice and cold. So when you're done operating your microscope for the day, you need to perform what's called a cryocycle. And this is essentially the same thing on all microscopes, although it might be called something else depending on the manufacturer. But on the FEIs, it's called a cryocycle. So the basic idea is that the column is pumped out by ion getter pumps. And when you perform a cryocycle, you shut off the ion getter pumps and then activate a turbo molecular pump. And then that acts to pump out the column. And then while that happens, the canister is removed from the copper braids. So since there's no more liquid nitrogen present, the cold trap heats up and all the stuff that is stuck to it then comes off and is pumped out by the turbo molecular pump. So this has an effect of cleaning out the column, if you will. Uh, it is important to remember to do this 
um, and not just let the cold trap come up to temperature without performing a cryocycle because otherwise all the stuff that's on the cold trap effectively will get dumped into the ion getter pumps and that's usually more than the ion getter pumps can handle so that puts an undue stress on the ion getter pumps. So that's the importance of running a cryocycle when you again are done using the microscope for the day. So to perform the cryocycle Again, you need to make sure your viewing screen is covered, again, to make sure you don't get any liquid nitrogen on there to potentially cause any cracking. You're going to remove the foam cap and then set it aside. You're going to remove the canister. And then you want to place something underneath the copper braids um, because there will be condensation that will form and then drop off, so you want something to catch the moisture. And then you're going to come to microscope control, go to the status tab in the vacuum control panel, expand the flap out, and there is a button that says cryocycle, and you're just going to select that. And that's basically it. So the microscope effectively now is unusable while the cryocycle is running, and generally speaking, a cryocycle is usually run six to eight hours, or if you do it at the end of the day, usually overnight. And then when you come back in in the morning, when you're ready to use the microscope again, you have to refill the cold trap. And so this concludes the video about the cold trap on your microscope and cryocycling. And so if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. If you have a suggested topic for a future video, please let me know. Thank you.